So how settled are Labour's plans on Europe? Well, a little earlier I spoke to the man who could have been the leader of the opposition if he hadn't been beaten by his brother. The former Labour Foreign Secretary, David Miliband. So are you personally in favour, in any way, shape or form, of an in or out referendum? Well, certainly not at the moment. I think well, when, that... then? Well, the principled position, I think, which people in the Labour Party take, and actually Conservatives like Ken Clark take, is that if and when there is a fundamental shift in the balance of power between London and Brussels, then it's right that that would be put to a referendum. So the example that's always given is that if a government ever came forward and said we want to join the euro, it should only do that with the consent of the people. So I think or there's if a powers are repatriated, as the Prime Minister there's says. There's a principled point. There's also a practical point, which is that if you've got the prospect of negotiations in 18 months, two years' time, to go into them by saying we're going to hold a gun to the head of all of our European partners, and if we don't get what we want, we're stomping out, which seems to be the Prime Minister's uh, approach, then you are painting yourself and, more important, your country into a corner, and that is very dangerous for Britain. Well, what have you got to fear from holding a referendum? I don't, I don't think there's anything. It's not a question of fear. It's a question of taking a serious issue in a serious road. I honestly think there's rarely been a more cack-handed approach to a serious policy issue than we've seen in the last couple of years. Remember, all of this emanates from the Prime Minister picking a fight with 81 of his backbenchers, losing it because they revolted against him, and then living in fear of what they're going to do to him in the future. That is why I think Ed was right to say it's weak, and it reminds me of the first part of John Major's government when he was being cowed by the Eurosceptics rather than the second part when he stood up to them. David Cameron's attack on the Labour leadership now is that there is a lack of clarity. And he has got a point there, hasn't he? Because you can't say whether at the next election you would offer people a referendum. As, well, as Lord Mundleton says, in there's... or out, get this issue out of the way. I once think before. actually it's a very, very weak attack on the Labour Party. And the weakness is demonstrated by the fact that Lord Heseltine, Ken Clark, Heseltine out of the government, Ken Clark in the cabinet, say, how can you promise a referendum on topics that you haven't yet negotiated at a time that's not yet clear in an economic context that we don't yet know? But that's something you've failed to engage the public on Europe, haven't you? Which is why a, a majority of, of the public are now against what they want to pull out of the EU. And that is something, surely, that you have to take some kind of responsibility I, I for. Think, look, look, I think that if you're saying that there's this irony or paradox that under Labour, when we were in government, we were more and more in a leadership role in the European Union on energy, on economics, on foreign policy, but that support for the European Union in Britain went down. That is a good point. And it Can went you down... take responsibility for that growing tide of Euroscepticism which well, developed I think what's interesting leadership. is, that, of course, one has to take responsibility for one's time in government. What's interesting is that that uh, growing Euroscepticism happened all across Europe. It wasn't confined to Britain. It started from a, a higher base, if you like, in this uh, country. But uh, I, I take completely on the chin that after 13 years of Labour government, we were in a stronger position in Europe, but Europe was less popular in Britain. How frustrating are you personally finding it being in opposition? Being oh, opposition I hate being in opposition. Of course I hate being in opposition, because if you care about the future of the country, if you care about what government does, then, and you're in politics, Politics is not about debating society. Politics is actually about changing things. And if you're in opposition, you can't change things. So is that why you haven't joined the front bench? Well, you mean, have I not joined the front bench because I'm... Because it's frustrating being in opposition? No, I haven't joined the front bench because I said that I thought it was right for Ed to have the space to lead the party as he sees fit. But if you're saying to me, is politics in opposition fun, I would say to you, no, it's not. It is frustrating. But it's fun talking to Cathy. After the break, as a new book looks back at the influence of the punk movement, we get up close and personal with some of the big names of the music that changed a generation.